Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories. Let's start with the story. AITA for walking out of my engagement party and ignoring calls for three days. My now ex boyfriend proposed to me four days ago. Let's call in Tim. Tim and I have been in a relationship for nearly two years. Both of us are 26 years old, and we'd frequently talked about our future together, including marriage and children. Until last week, I genuinely believe that we had the perfect love life. Tim has a best friend named Mimi, which is not her real name, and a close-knit group of friends. Throughout our relationship, Tim often prioritized his friends over me, which became a significant issue. For instance, he missed an important promotion dinner for my work because Mimi's dog was sick. Tim also skipped our Diwali celebrations with my family to help his friends paint their new house. This was a recurring pattern. Whenever his friends needed something, I would be pushed to the background. There were also past issues with his friends that led to his father threatening to take away his inheritance and distribute it to relatives. To give you more context, Tim's dad was the one who introduced us. Before I left my job last year, his father was my boss. I've always respected him a lot and see him as a father figure. I clearly expressed to Tim that I don't like public proposals. I'm a very introverted person, and having a lot of attention on me during a personal moment would cause me a great deal of anxiety. Tim assured me he understood and promised not to propose publicly. Another concern I raised was about Mimi. I mentioned that she treats me passively aggressively due to my anxiety and mild OCD. I asked him not to involve her in our relationship. He dismissed my concerns, claiming Mimi only wanted the best for us. I didn't push the issue further because Tim became defensive. On Thursday, when I walked into my flat, I was greeted by a surprising scene. Tim's friends were all there, with Tim dressed in a suit and holding a ring. The flat was overcrowded with people I didn't even know. My anxiety levels skyrocketed. Before Tim had a chance to say anything, Mimi interjected with, Chill up, dear God, this is not the time to make that face. Her comment pushed me over the edge. I was overwhelmed and had a severe anxiety attack. I calmly told everyone that there would be no proposal and asked them to leave my flat immediately. They looked stunned, so I left with just my purse, called my best friend to clear them out, and took a car service to my cabin, crying the whole way. I texted my parents to let them know I was okay and to not answer Tim's calls. I turned off my phone and stayed at the cabin. Luckily, I had enough cash for groceries, and the cabin had been used last month, so it was stocked. I only turned my phone back on when I was calling her car and saw a flood of missed calls and texts. When I called Tim, he sounded defeated and kept apologizing and crying. I told him it was over. My best friend had informed Tim's dad about the situation, and he was furious. He told Tim that he would only receive half of his inheritance from now on. Now, I feel like I may have reacted excessively and could have handled the situation with more grace. I'm worried that my anxiety might have caused me to overreact, and I might have cost him his inheritance. AIT? Edit. Tim and I are both Indian, and one reason Tim's dad liked me is that we share the same culture, though I'm uncomfortable with that reasoning. I'm a lawyer and earn enough to afford my flat and cabin, while Tim only had access to my flat. Update. Most people who commented on my previous posts agreed that I wasn't at fault. After discussing the situation with my family and friends, I realized that my reaction wasn't entirely wrong. Regarding changing the locks, my best friend, who is staying with me for a few days, checked my flat and confirmed that everything was in order, so that's one issue resolved. To those questioning the reality of my owning a cabin, yes, I have enough financial stability to live comfortably on my own and also have a second place I enjoy going to alone. Some people have sent me messages suggesting I would never find a husband if I didn't learn to keep my mouth shut. To those people, please spare me. I don't have the mental space to engage with such negativity. For the main update, I first spoke to Tim's dad. He was extremely angry with Tim, saying he had finally crossed a line with his friends and asked me to forgive his son. I told him respectfully that even if I reconciled with Tim, my dad would not approve, which was true. Tim's dad then apologized and offered to support me if I needed help in the future. I decided to return the items Tim left at my flat because I don't want him coming over again. Tim apologized profusely, 
saying he didn't realize how serious my social anxiety was and thought his friend's enthusiasm would be a positive thing. I asked him why none of my friends were present at the proposal. He responded that since I had only a few friends, he thought a dinner with them would be better. His comment hurt because it suggested that his friends deserved to be at the proposal while mine didn't. Tim also mentioned that Mimi disliked one of my friends because she was a single mom, which made me even angrier. I told him he would be better off with Mimi since it was clear everything in his life revolved around her. I told him he was a terrible partner, and the reason I wouldn't marry him was that he allowed Mimi to bully me throughout our relationship. Tim looked deeply hurt and continued to apologize, claiming he never cheated and loved me, promising to do better. I told him I would consider giving him another chance if he cut ties with all his friends and moved with me to a new city. He cried, saying he couldn't live that way, and asked me to reconsider. I knew he would never choose me over his friends. I told him that Mimi would never choose him over her successful boyfriend, and neither would his friends choose him over their families. Tim said he would limit contact with them, but I told him it was too late. I left, dropping off his things. He wouldn't even get up or apologize further, he just turned his face away. I left feeling heartbroken and disillusioned. Later, Mimi came to my flat and asked if we could talk. My friend, who was with me, thought it was a bad idea, but I was working and crying, so I let Mimi in. She said that Tim had yelled at her for ruining his relationship, and that she didn't understand what she did wrong. I had no energy for her, so I asked her to leave. Mimi claimed she wanted to support Tim, and that me making his dad cut him off was awful. She said her comment was just a joke, and that I shouldn't have taken it seriously. I asked her to leave, and she wished me happiness in the future. I blocked all of Tim's friends and Tim himself, and I'll change the locks next week. I wish I had something positive to share, but unfortunately, there's nothing more to say for now. I hope this will be the last update. Tim and his friends are from school, including Mimi. They form a group of eight to nine people, with two of them engaged and one married. Tim is technically the most financially well-off among them, thanks to his father's wealth. Tim frequently helps out with their projects, decorations, and even pays some of their bills while giving them gifts. I used to think he was a very generous person, but it became clear that he only extended this generosity to his friends, not to me or even his father. It was disheartening to realize that I was consistently overlooked and that his friends were always prioritized. This experience has been deeply painful, and while I'm trying to focus on moving forward, it's hard not to feel the weight of everything that happened. I'm taking this time to reflect and heal, and hopefully, I can find a way to move on from this tumultuous chapter of my life.